Don't Stop Driving by Carsey Cat. I was passing time behind the counter talking with coworkers when I overheard a man arguing with my boss about how he should be allowed to return coffee if he hadn't touched it. My coworker said that the same man was here last night and that he ordered the most absurd amount of coffee. This weak argument didn't make it past my boss and he quickly denied it. Curiosity got the best of my coworker, and she approached the counter and began questioning where he went last night with his arms full of coffee. The man, who I was now scanning closely, was very unkempt and sported bloodshot eyes. Obviously, something with my coworker's questions struck a nerve, as he suddenly became very paranoid, and given his appearance made everyone behind the counter very aware and nervous. He looked around the shop before motioning and asking my coworkers to come around the counter. She quickly looked over to me and our other employees for help. And then we all approached the man. By this point, he's trembling. But once I'm closer, I realize that he's shaking with excitement, with a giant smile surrounded by messy scruff. He began to speak about how he had stayed up all night to visit his girlfriend. Immediately after he began his rambling, I recognized the name of his girlfriend as a girl who had recently gone missing, and there were no leads in her case. This isn't a small town, but everyone knew that girl because her case was so baffling. She went missing after leaving her house to drive to work. The girl just disappeared, along with her car and everything in it. My coworkers must have realized this too, as the tone shifted from fear to sympathy and I believe that we all thought he was going crazy out of his grief for his lost girlfriend. After we lost interest in the conversation and dismissed him, he still stood in front of the counter and he continued on with his drivel. What ended up catching my attention was his conspiracy theory behind his girlfriend's disappearance. My coworkers had gone back to talking or cleaning up the mess from his order while I lingered close enough to hear his developing theory. And once he saw me listening, he started directing his story towards me. This man restarted from the beginning of his rant. He said it all began when he saw his girlfriend in a trance-like state, approaching her car minutes after she had arrived home, hours after her expected arrival. Upon confrontation, she simply kissed him goodbye before driving away towards work. After his girlfriend left, he said that he went back into their room to see if she had confiscated any drinks from the work party she attended the night before that might explain her behavior. But he couldn't help but notice her open journal lying on their bed. The police confiscated the pages for investigation, but he was able to transcribe what it said to another piece of paper and hide it during the searches. This is when he pulled out his copy of the journal entry and showed me what it said. 12318. This was only brought to my attention last night, when I didn't return from my shift until this morning at sunrise instead of at night. When I was driving to work, the sun had already set. I heard a noise from behind my car and I looked to check my rearview mirror for the culprit. In my mirror, there was absolutely no light except in the areas which my taillights illuminated, which isn't that odd. What was odd was the figure, who looked to be a young teen girl. She was approaching from the edge of the darkness. I kept driving, but I also watched the sight unfolding behind me. Instantly, an overpowering sense of dread filled me once I comprehended what was happening. The girl stayed just at the edge of the darkness and pursued me at the same speed as my car. I looked away from the rear because I wasn't about to fall victim to a car accident but I found myself a victim to a much, much larger horror. Ahead of me, where there should have been an intersection, lay a straight, barely lit, seemingly never-ending road. It was littered with street signs every inch of the way. Also, there were no other cars anywhere in sight, even though I knew I had just been behind an unmistakably bright red minivan. I understood then that if I stopped my car and then the light that shielded my car, I would be allowing the thing behind my car to get close and close the gap and follow through with whatever its intentions were. Once my tears and shock had subsided enough to focus on something other than driving, I took a closer look at the side of the road. All of the signs had the same message. 
Don't stop driving. Well, I already knew this. Behind the bold text was different images of different people. Each showed a scene of torture being applied to them. I checked back on my personal shadow to see now that the girl was crying. Horrible howls echoed through the air. I kept my eyes on her for a while, and I saw that she was mouthing at me. It looked like she was asking me to stop my car. I looked away. I couldn't stand to watch her torture. I checked the gas gauge. I still had a full tank, like before my shift, and I continued driving. Nothing ever changed, other than the songs that I played on the radio to keep me awake and to distract me from my living nightmare. As the sun began to rise, the horrid land before me was replaced with the same street that I was on before, the first time that I checked my rearview mirror. It was the same street. My little horror behind the car was now gone. This is when you'll remember me coming home and rushing up to my room with a work party and a dead phone as an excuse, which isn't exactly a lie, because even though my radio seemed to keep me in connection with my phone, it wouldn't pick up any signal. What messed with me the most was I had gotten a note stuck to the back of my car, which freaked me out because that little thing behind my car didn't leave the darkness, or at least not while I was looking at it. The note feels heavy, but it's just a sealed envelope with nothing on it. I plan on opening the note now. By now, the man was even more giddy, and I was on the verge of tears. I questioned him on what this has to do with anything, and he told me that he got a message from his girlfriend. He pulled out a letter. It was unopened. He said that the police had resealed it after the investigation, but... Seriously, they did an amazing job, because it looked practically untouched. The seal was still very much intact. The man claimed that it was on the back of his car after he himself went on the same nightmare that his girlfriend had driven the night of her alleged account. I didn't want to upset such a disturbed man, so I opened the letter. I understand now. I have to help his girlfriend. He told me to wait until sunset and to look out my rearview mirror until I see her. Following me, I know what to do next. I grabbed a coffee from behind the counter and went into my car. My co-workers were yelling at me, but I could barely hear them. As I drove away, I saw him waving me off, the biggest smile spreading across his face as he held my co-workers back. <laughs>